All right, we're going to take a look at toggle systems. So toggle systems typically are things referred to as fiddlestick, um, smooth operator, things like that. Uh, we can improvise those things, and we've been improvising them for years with everything from screwdrivers to, to you name it when we're doing urban things. So taking a look at this, whether we're doing urban or we're doing mountain, canyon, things like that, we're going to have it going right through this rig plate here, realizing that this can be anything from a tree to uh, a balcony uh, railing to, to you name it. Uh, we can wrap that large trees, small trees, uh, large rocks, things like that. So when we look at it, we're going to kind of dig into the minutiae. I know Dominic's done quite a few on the double route where we can have two lines coming down, uh, which means you'll need double the rope that you have for, for your rappel. We're gonna just do a single route because all the principles of the single are gonna be true for the double also. So we come around here, uh, we'll see that the, depending on how much you want that tail end um, is gonna change as far as as far as what you're what you're needing to do or how offset your anchor is gonna be, and we'll talk about that here in a second. First thing we want to talk about is the configuration which we tie that knot. So it's a stone knot that's an upward stone knot compared to a downward stone knot. So we're always gonna be tying that towards our anchor when we do that. And we'll kind of show you why and what happens when you don't do it. And we'll also talk about the twist. So we'll talk about the twist first. So when we're looking at this, I've got the tail in here. We want to remember our configuration and that's what's going to help us keep this clean. And so on this one, my configuration is it's kind of laying on top. If I turn it to the side, my tail's on the left-hand side. So when we look at that, we reach from the back, bring it over, and then we bring it up towards our anchor. So what you'll see is a twist that's in here, and this is gonna kill all the OCD knot tires in here because they're gonna to want to naturally try and make that knot clean and take the twist out. The key to this is that you don't. You leave it with the twist and you leave that twist inside that knot. And we'll kind of show you, show you why. So as we're coming up here, you can see that twist right now that's coming in. So it's right in front of us in this area right here. And we wanna keep that twist in there. And you'll see that my configuration is this is still on my left and that's important because when I put my device in here and my toggle, as soon as I pull this so we have that thing tightened, we have our safeties in, we all do a repel, last guy down comes down, we unweight this, this gets pulled down. As this falls out, nice and clean just like this so it pulls right over. If we try and take care of that twist while we're tying this and make it nice and clean, what will happen is here's my twist here, but let's say I just let this wrap around and so now it looks nice and clean inside and I feel, feel good about myself because I kept my knot clean. What will happen is we weight this down, we hit this, and when we pull this out, you'll see the configuration that this has twists in it. So when it goes like this and we start pulling it and it's got one or two twists in it, depending on our thing, this will create more friction than what we want, especially the longer up we go. So we want that twist to remain inside that knot. So just kill every inkling you have to take take that out. The other reason we want to show you is when we tie this and we're working our way up towards the anchor, this produces an upward stone knot. So the key to this and why we do that is we can check to make sure we tied it correctly because the bite that comes off that anchor is going to be sitting really flat across here. So we know we tied it, tied it correctly in that, that form. So when it releases, this just falls apart. If we tied it the opposite direction, and this is a little difficult to do in this configuration, but I'll tie it going down here. Because when we do that, you'll see the change right off the bat is we have a large bulky bite that comes out the bottom here. So with that, let me try and get this here. This is what we have. So we can see that as that comes out, it's this big loop, it's not flat whatsoever. The downside to that is when we pull this out, and this gets it all tightened up. When we go, we may get a pop out of this and then it's biting on itself. Uh, so it creates almost like a, a, a munter mule. So if that continues up to your anchor, now you got huge deals and you're not able to pull that out. So it creates that bite, almost like those that do munter mules, and you have to pop that out. And that doesn't give us opportunity. So just remember, that's why we do the upward, because when we come in here, that is gonna sit nice and flat for us. There's our twist, so we know our twist is inside there, so we know it's gonna break nice and clean when we pull it. We get that down, this is gonna be nice and flat. When we talk about securing it, you'll look on some that allow you to secure it. This way with carabiners in here, um, we've done that before. A lot of times what happens is once we weight that thing uh, and it gets stretched out a little bit, the last person down has to take these out. 
sometimes it gets a little problematic with doing it, with pulling rope up a little bit, maneuvering this around. Sometimes we've got to loosen this up a little bit to even get that out. So to avoid that on the GAT, we got an arrow here. So the arrow actually keeps this safe from going through. So you don't need a carabiner on this side at all. Uh, you will need one over here as everyone's going down. So the options on there, you got quite a few deals on how you can rig that if you want to. So how we typically do it is we go around the back. We're dealing with just a 7.5 and we'll kind of show you the differences depending on the diameter of rope that you're using. So we just send that around the back, bite comes through here and we click that in. I'm pretty good with this when we've done it because we've done it quite a bit. So I know that if a rock's hitting this and people are changing their fall lines each time, that this is going to block in and block that there. So not even the tip is coming in close. For those that want this a little bit tighter, depending on that, obviously if we use a larger diameter rope or something bulky and we do doubles, this steps out a little bit so it becomes tighter on its own. Uh, if you're running a single line and if this is 7.5 right here, then you can actually just windlass this. And as you windlass it, obviously things get tighter. Once it gets to a decent tightness, then you can just flip that right over to the inside just like that. And now when this goes, you'll see that it basically carabiner blocks through there and you're good. So if you like those a little bit more visible, then that's what you do. Uh, typically when we're dealing with pull lines, your pull line will be set up second to the last person. We'll take your pull line down and once they get to the bottom, you can safely remove your safety. They keep the pull line out of your fall line and then you're able to repel uh, by just taking that off and going from there. That's the technique on there. Obviously, you can run this as your pull line. You can run your pull line off of this. These are obviously made in to put your chem lights for when we're doing this urban and dark. And, uh, and then there's obviously a, a flotation device that slips onto this. So if we're using it in water, uh, you've got your chem light and it's floating on the water. And when you pull this, we got the twist in there so you see how it breaks clean. You're right there. And that's how it pulls. All right, we're gonna rig this for a rig to lower or a rig to raise. So in canyoneering, some of the mountaineering, uh, we do a lot of contingency anchors. So if somebody gets stuck on a rappel, we have the capability of loosening that up and being able to lower them safely to the ground. In some cases, lower may not wanna be the option that we have, we may wanna raise them. So that's obviously your rig to raise or rig to lower. Thing with that, we need to have double the length of rope typically. Um, there's ways that you can shortcut that one way or another, but we just want to show on this short section how you can use that with your toggle. So as we come around here in the tree, normally this is where we come in and put in our toggle. Before we do that, we want to put it into the rope knot. So whatever you guys feel like doing, uh, I don't really use eights a whole bunch, but we'll, we'll rip an eight out for this one. Going back a little nostalgia. So once we have that eight, now we kind of come down and then we're going to rig in for there. So our twist is right where it needs to be. Pop that in and then we pop it in the gap or the toggle of choice. Hit that down. Now, because we're doing that, we're probably going to have a safety on here. So, right, because we're sending other members of our group down. This isn't for last person. Last person at risk is going to DC, disconnect everything before they come down and do it that way. So for our purposes, we'll just have this as if we're sending everybody down. I'm gonna go ahead and windlass this up so it's nice and tight. Pretty much keeping our carabiner out of our way. And we got that going. This now is gonna be the strand that we can rig off of. So when we're looking at that, obviously we could rig the shorter without a problem, uh, but just for the video, because we have double that rope, we're gonna make sure on a contingency anchor, right? We have just enough rope that gets everybody down to the ground. So the rope's just gonna be touching the bottom. So we're gonna have all this extra slack up here that, that'll remain in the bag. And after we measure that, so we have this length that's going off this way that's down on the rappel, we can use a descent device. There's a hundred different ways to, to do your contingency. On this, probably the easiest way is the least amount of kit is just to make your munter. So on that munter, all we're gonna do, since this is our rappel line here, is we're gonna tie that munter off and we're just gonna use a monster, a monster tie up on that. So we come up in here, bring that around, and then we're just going to tie this monster off. So we got this tied up right here when we're looking at this. We've got our rappel line. It's right here. So everyone will be rappelling off of this. This is tensioning down here. If we have any issue whatsoever, we can actually then untie this and this big loop 
of rope that we have here, this is going to be all the extra stuff, is going to be the line in which we lower off of. So as this comes out, we're now into a munter where we can adjust. And then as we do that, you can see that you're just flaking out the big extra loop that you have still in your bag. So we can still run that all day on there. Off the same system, right, we have this and we still have the extra stuff that's in our bag. So we measure it the same way. So enough rope is just getting us to the ground over here. So with this rope, if we're going to do a rig to raise, obviously we can use a set of fours, a phantom haul kit, whatever you want on there. Uh, an easy way, right, is we can just take our micro and this is our rappel line here, is we can just attach that right down to there. And then we're going to build our three to one right off there and do a rig to raise. If this is tension, same thing, very easy. We can just take this, apply that onto there. Once we release it off of our rig to lower, then this will have our weight. And then we can just rig our three to one straight off here where we can pull up or we can put a change of direction and rig a three to one to change of direction and be able to pull them down. But we just incorporate our uh, progressive capture into there.